basketball. That's where I got my thrills, man. You know, this basketball probably kept me halfway alive every single day for years, hooping. Now the little homies is up here. That's dope. It's cool stuff. My name is Lorene Patterson. I came to Minnesota in our 69. So why in the world did you come to Minnesota from Mississippi? Well, you know, I had said I would never leave Mississippi. But when I came to Minnesota, my in-laws kept encouraging me to come because they was here and they had been here for a few years. And so they said, you have better opportunity here for you and the kids. Mm -hmm. So I, just, I came first to just visit. And after I came to visit, I decided, they kept uh, asking me, well, stay, stay, stay. So I decided I would uh, stay a couple of weeks and then I went back. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back, I didn't go back. Now I gotta <laughs> say, I'm so thankful, I appreciate it. I remember when I first started cutting hair um, and I had all the, I went on the bike and I got the friends and we were in the garage out here. And I was cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. And got to October, you know, Minnesota. October started to get cold. And mm -hmm. we got to, uh, I think about the end of October, and you finally said, you know what, you can come in the house. <laughs> and she said, you can come in the house. And I started cutting hair in the basement. And I promise you, we had so many people in and out of this house. That's right. Sure I did. I mean, so many people in and out of this house. And, and, and never, uh, and never a problem. Never, never a problem. Never a problem. And they were so, so, so respectful. And I, and I remember the one time there was an incident, and then there wasn't nothing but God's mercy. God's I had gone mercy. to Mississippi, and my room, where I right. live, two bullets came through Came through the window. And if he had been there, he'd have been gone. That's where I used to be every single night. Every day. Night. Every day. And he made, uh, that's where he started his uh, the music. music. <laughs> and he was good at it. He loved that room. Because that's where he stayed most of his time in that room. She said, but the room to the basement. <laughs> yep. To the from kitchen. The room to, to the basement to the kitchen. But right here, back when I was hustling, um, this was my room. And shoebox money. I used to have a shoebox full of money. And this is where I put it, like right here. And I hid it behind like a bunch of boots and shoes. But like this was my first bank. The shoebox. <laughs> Um, and back when I was hustling, my drawer used to be kind of like over here and I, I take a sock, you know, like I have a, a pair of socks and it was tube socks back then. And, you know, I would take the, the dope and put it all down in there and then roll it up. <laughs> and then that way, you know, you know who was going to check for, check a sock, you know, who, who thinks to some illicit stuff in the sock. And the way I had it set up, so I had a studio in here, and my bed was over on this side. And this window right here, this I used to sit right in front of this window because this is where the keyboard was. The speakers were here and here. You know, I had posters, all the favorite artists up, and all the equipment, my, me and my, my guy Favius. I mean, and we used to record. We had the, um, the mic, the boom mic right there, so it was like... And we had to wait until the house was quiet to record, but we could just make beats all day. And my mom, I, I failed the entrance test to barber school. And my mom was like, you never failed test, something's wrong. And she had the insight. She said, you need to go to Mississippi, take a break. So I went to Mississippi and probably like eh, two weeks, three weeks after being there, I get a phone call and people asking all these questions. I'm like, what's going on? And two bullets came through this window here and here. I mean, and God knows, like, you know, my family's walking through the hall, so anything could have happened. It was nothing but the grace of God that nobody was walking through there. And obviously, that my mom, that God told her that, you know, for whatever reason, my mother's intuition, um, get him out of here. And so I wasn't here that night because this is where I spent all my time. So, yeah, man, I always say, like, you know, I'm here for some reason because certainly that could have been uh, bad. But yeah, man, this is this was where uh, where it all started for me. The basement, you know, every every day after school, this was the route straight to the basement. 
<laughs> his stuff down here now, but it was the same color blue. Like, and this is the couch. The famous couch is still here. I need to, I need to take this couch. This couch is the same couch that the homies used to sit on. I mean, be packed. Homies here, here, just waiting. And this was my cutting area. So like, old school what? hydraulics. I put this on there years ago. Same mirror, this was my mirror. And I scratched this in there. Like 30 years ago, man. Like, just wild. What am I, 41? So yeah, like, yeah, man. 28 years ago, but this was the area. I don't even think it's been painted or nothing. This was my towel rack where I kept a paper towel for the razor line. Had a desk here, clippers. <laughs> this was the spot, man. Wild stuff. Wild stuff. I was making like 950 bucks a week by the time I was 16 out of this basement. It's crazy. <laughs> and if you ain't been through this basement, you ain't real north side. <laughs> this is a famous place, man.